Il est mort Probable. Mais on n'a pas de confirmation. Je savais qu'ils allaient se débarrasser de lui. Moi aussi. When I think about my ex today, I realize I am so much happier now she's dead. Welcome to Raza. Hello, I hope you're all keeping safe if you're on lockdown like us here in Paris. Today we're going to give you some TV tips with our critic Deep Tika Laurent. We're also joined by the creator of the hit French TV series, The Bureau de Legende. Where are you in lockdown? Uh, I'm locked down in Paris, in my in apartment. Paris as well. And, How's it going? Uh, well, uh, it's okay. Uh, you know, we are right, we writers who are used to stay home and <laughs> stare at the blank wall <laughs> and have, uh, having uh, no idea at all. So it's okay. <laughs> This is exactly my situation here. And Le Bureau de Legende is going into its fifth season. For people watching who might not have heard of it, tell us a line about it. Introduce it to us. Well, uh, just for for those who had seen the bureau uh, the, the fourth season, they know uh, there 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 was there was a situation, a very delicate situation for the main character Malotru, uh, Pain in the Ass, <laughs> it's, it's, it's called name, <laughs> and and then uh, the fifth season will will start. Uh, with a, a very special situation because the dis, um, the murdering of Malotru is now uh, on the newspapers. It's a news. Dipti, this series has been a massive success in its fifth season now. It, it has, Eve. It has been a huge success, particularly outside of France, and it is a, a show that takes us deep into the heart of the French secret service, as Eric was saying. It's, um, you know, based on this very magnetic character, Malotru, uh, Paul Lefebvre, played by Mathieu Kassovitz, who the, basically the show starts with him coming back um, from a mission in Syria. He commits a treasonous act, let's say, and and that act has ramifications of which are played out throughout the entire series. And this latest season takes us to Russia, Cambodia, Saudi Arabia. Let's take a look. Il est mort, oui ou non? Je souhaiterais que vous enquêtiez sur votre ancien patron. Qu'est-ce qu'on cherche? Quand on apprend l'existence d'une troupe, on a peur d'avoir été balancé. Pourquoi ils auraient fait ça? Les ennemis de mes ennemis sont mes amis. Eric, um, you've obviously been the showrunner for the past five seasons. This one is your last as showrunner. How did you change the vision of the series going into this season as your last one? What was very interesting for us, uh, for the writers, is just to break all the rules we had and to try a lot of things because people are now very familiar with the, the universe. Of the of the show, and then we can uh, we, we we can uh, drive them where we want. Uh, so we can try uh, very new things. Uh, in Timmy, uh, you know, uh, we can go in into their private life. Uh, we can uh, we can play with uh, the, uh, the characters and the themes. So this is it's because uh, it's the fi the fifth season, not because it's my last one. And why was it important for you, Eric, to tell the story of this agency? I'm very interested about the way the secret services uh, see the world and see the geopolitical geo um, crisis and uh, tensions. That's why I think that secret services are interesting. And inside and with this vision, we just built um, some... Uh, Uh, entertaining spectacle, uh, entertaining show, because it's like it's like a thriller. You know, you have tension, you have suspense, you have a very strong emotion, but everything linked is based on a geop geopolitical crisis and fighting. And the show has actually been ranked the third best international TV series in the last decade by the New York Times. How does that make you feel? Uh, proud. Certainly, 
and uh, very I was surprised. But uh, to tell you the truth, I don't like to be, uh, you know, I, I, I don't like to have grades, you know. Uh, we do, uh, it's, it's not, a, it's not 100% an art, but it's a creation. And when you create something, you don't want to have stars or, or grades, you know, it's, it's not like sport. The last two episodes of this season, um, it was actually you, you handed the reins over to famed French filmmaker Jacques Odia, and you in this season actually appear in front of the camera. Two big changes. How did those changes come about? To ask Jacques Odia to, to, to finish the show is just a way to finish you know, with beauty. Uh, uh, I didn't want to. Um, I didn't want to spoil the end. I didn't want to. Um, to finish on, on the bad, uh, on the bad, um, you know, with the bad ideas, or uh, so I asked the best one in France uh, to take over, and uh, fortunately he, he accepted it because he knew the show, he liked it, and it was in uh, he was uh, interested to try uh, to do that kind of work, and I, I must say that his poetry and. Um, his universe and his creativity is so strong that I'm very, very uh, proud and very, uh, uh, I'm very happy the way he ended the show. Okay, and um, so as we mentioned, you're you're stepping down as showrunner after this season. What's next for you? I read somewhere that you've signed to a U.S. agency. Are you maybe developing a U.S. series? Can you tell us more about your plans after Le Bureau des Légendes? Yes, it's uh, yes. I think that uh, I could develop a U.S. Uh, show uh, with uh, with um, a, a U.S. producer. It's 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 a uh, yes. It's an option. Uh, maybe a movie, but certainly a new show, um, international show. Any ideas, Eric? Can you tell us? Have you have you got any concrete ideas for a show? I have, but I won't share. <laughs> I thought as much. <laughs> and Eric, there's never been a better time um, to catch up on some TV. Have you been watching any in confinement? Uh, I, I watch a lot. I watch a lot of shows, but uh, for those who have never uh, so the, uh, haven't seen this one, I, I, I recommend uh, Succession. Uh, uh, one of the best of the year, I think the, the best show uh, of the year. Um, uh, personally, uh, for, my, for myself, I, I watch a lot of shows, but I, uh, you know, uh, any, anything, any, 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 any show, you know, I like it, but this show, Succession, is the best one. And Eric, did you ever watch the hit series Killing Eve? Not yet, not yet. Well, BBC America's hit show Killing Eve is back with a third season dipped, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. The cat and mouse chase continues between uh, Sandra Oska, MI6 agent, her character, Eve Palastri and uh, Jodie Comer's crazed, unpredictable villain, Villanelle. Uh, season two's ended on a cliffhanger. Season three opens with uh, some answers and one shocking death. Take a look. When I think about my ex today, I realize... I am so much happier now she's dead. You know, you really shouldn't leave your front door open considering the amount of people that have tried to kill you. Oh. Dipti, what did you make of it? You know what, Eve? I, I loved this show in the beginning. Season one, came, it sort of came out with such a bang. It was so novel. It was so fresh. They teased this pseudo-sexual relationship between an agent and a, and a villain. It was really good. Season three feels a little tired. You know, the magic that was in season one is, is definitely not there. I feel like this, the show has sort of petered out as the seasons progress and definitely a, a bit of a shame. Even if I must say the main protagonists are totally worth watching, the show is definitely worth watching it just doesn't have that magic you know the quirkiness that measured craziness that made it so good in the beginning it's sort of given way to some to sort of a narrative that's messy and 
you've honestly, I, I think the show doesn't actually know where it's going anymore. Well, another show that's in its third season is the Israeli hit drama Fowder. Uh, tell us about that, Dipti. Well, that's right. It's out for its third season. It was also a show that was ranked on that New York Times uh, list last year. Fauda um, means chaos in Arabic, and this is an Israeli-produced uh, political thriller about an elite Israeli counterterrorism unit uh, led by the brooding, charismatic uh, Dor uh, Doron Cavillo, played by the series co-creator Leo Raz. And Basically, this season changes setting from uh, the West Bank to Gaza, where Doran is an undercover boxing instructor who's trying to bring down a Hamas terrorist. Um, look, let's be honest. This is a show that is quite macho, quite brawny. It is told from an Israeli vantage point, but the show does include a lot of um, Arabic-speaking characters, uh, Palestinian characters, and all of its main characters speak Arabic and Hebrew. In any case, Fada has been a huge hit internationally. There's an Indian adaptation in the works and a season four already planned. Okay. Well, Eric, that sounds a bit up your street. Have you ever watched Fada? Yeah, the first season, yes, but um, I try not to watch uh, a spy, a spy or this kind of business show because I have my own to write and to create. So, uh, so uh, when I finish, when I'm done, I, I try to, to to see something else you know, and to uh, and to to jump in another kind of universe. Okay, well, Fada is available on Netflix um, this month and then in French-speaking territories and in Israel later on and um, this year in June. We're going to leave it there. Thank you so much, Dipti. Thank you so much, Eric Rochon, for joining us. Keep safe, Thank everyone. You. See you soon. Thank you. Stay safe. <laughs> Welcome to Gaza.